friends, Brian Fleshing of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing School, and welcome back to our Getting Started in Fly Fishing program. In our last episode, I got things rolling by giving you a list of the six basic things that you need to understand to get started in a sport, and today we're going to take a look at number one on that list, and that is, of course, the fly rod. The fly rod, number one on our list. And the fly rod is a flexible lever that makes the job of fly casting much easier, okay? So bear with me. It's actually the fly line itself in our system that makes the cast happen. The rod just makes the job of moving this line and back and forth much easier. In fact, as we progress in this series and we get outside and I start showing some casting stuff, I'll show you that I can cast this fly line without a rod. I'll do it with my bare hands. It's not that hard. It's just that I look pretty stupid doing it. And then once the fly hits the water, what am I going to do? So the fly rod, albeit not your most important piece of gear, is a pretty important thing to understand. So let's again step back and we're going to take a look at the variables uh, that go along with selecting your first fly rod or any fly rod. And the fly line here, this orange stuff, again, this is your second most important piece of gear. And a fly line is weighed in grains, okay? And bear with me, you'll understand this here in just a second. Now, such and such grains, and don't ask me how a jeweler's unit of measure made it into the world of fly fishing, but it is how it is. So, such and such grains, X grains, equals what the fly fishing industry refers to as a one-weight fly rod. Excuse me, one-weight fly line, okay? And such and such grains more equals a two-weight. Such and such grains more equals a three-weight. And et cetera, et cetera, four-weight, five-weight, on up to 15 or 16-weight fly lines these days. Now it's not really important, especially at this stage of the game, for you to, to, you to know the actual grain weights. What's important to know for you is that a one weight is your lightest and it's gonna be your thinnest and therefore your most delicate. Whereas as you go up, that line actually gets heavier, it has more mass, it's thicker, uh, and <coughs> and basically on up to where 15 and 16 is gonna be your thickest. That's what's important to know, that a one weight fly line is your thinnest, has the least mass, 15 or 16 being the heaviest, okay? So you understand that, and now, it's easy math. Fly rods are also weighted accordingly. A one weight fly rod is designed to cast a one weight fly line. Simple math. I am going to ask you to do some math as we go through the series, but this isn't it, okay? One weight fly line is designed to be cast on a one weight fly rod. Two weight fly rod, cast a two weight fly line on that. Real simple, match the number of the rod up to the number of the line. Super easy. Let's do it this way. A one weight, two weight, and three weight fly rods are what you would call ultra light. Those are gonna be for uh, light duty, say trout fishing. You're typically gonna throw dry flies, very small light flies or ones that float. And you might do some, uh, some pan fish, some bluegill, uh, sunfish, things like that. There's nothing more fun than catching a bluegill on a two-weight. It's gonna make it feel like a tarpon, okay? But then you get into four-weight, five-weight, and six-weight fly rods, and that's gonna be your all-around category. You're gonna be able to trout fish. You're gonna be able to smallmouth, uh, light-duty bass fishing. Um, can, this four weight, five weight, six weight, this is going to be, I'm going to say where 95% of you out there in the world are going to get started. I call this the average Joe, average Jane category, okay? 
four weight, five weight, six weight. And we'll come back and we'll define this a little bit further. But then when you get into seven, eight, and nine weights, there you're starting to talk about bigger stuff. This might be heavy duty, large mouth bass fishing. You're gonna get into salmon, steelhead, pike, and let's say salt water. Okay, so seven, eight, and nine starts to get you into the bigger stuff. Yeah, if you came to me and you said, um, I, I just want to fish for uh, off the docks, uh, off the coast of Florida, or you're just going to fish for pike, or you're just going to fish for steelhead, you may wind up in this seven, eight, and nine weight category. Okay, so let me erase that and then we'll jump ahead. A 10. 11 and a 12 weight fly rod that's going to be primarily uh, musky uh, most of the guys fishing musky around here and which is big business these days musky on a fly rod that's mostly done with 10 weights and then you're primarily dealing with saltwater fishing uh, when i fish for redfish down in louisiana i'm fishing a 10 weight uh, and then once you get up into 11 and 12 you're talking about tarpon you're talking about bigger saltwater game fish. And then anything 13 to 16, you're primarily dealing with blue water. Okay? Blue water fish, uh, sailfish, marlin, tuna, you're fishing deep, basically offshore fishing. And I'm just guessing that the most of you watching this aren't looking to be offshore experts instantly with a fly rod. So, um, four weight, five weight, and six weight is going to be your average, average Joe, average Jane, you're probably going to wind up in this category. So tune in for our next episode where I'm going to talk about the length of the fly rod and then we'll also have an episode on the action of a fly rod and you should have a pretty good idea of what fly rod to select to get started in the sport of fly fishing. Thanks for watching as always subscribe and stay tuned for more on getting started in fly fishing.